Hi, my name's Ali Kane. I'm a freelance finance journalist and the host of the Buy That Business podcast. Each episode, we look at everything you need to know about buying and selling a business. Today, we're talking to Len Ferguson from Finn Business Sales. Now, buying a business can be hugely rewarding, but it's really important to understand what you're getting yourself into. So today, we're going to talk about why you should buy a business versus any other sort of asset. Hi, Len. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Ali. How are you? I'm really well. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. So tell me about some of the things that you should look for if you're thinking about buying a business. Yeah, I think um, primarily profit. Obviously, you want to make sure the business is profitable and it's got, you know, a long probably a long history of profit. That's probably the number one thing. Everyone sort of knows that I, I think, or I hope they do, but, you know, long-term profit history is the most important thing uh, for any business. And, you know, there's probably a few other things after that, but that's the main thing. So what are some of those other things that you should look for? Um, customers, perhaps really good staff? Yeah, yeah and, and I think, um, you know, it depends a little bit on the business. You know, location is important for some businesses. Um, has it got a good location, a sustainable location? Is it going to be impacted by other things that are that are around it? Um, developments, as, as an example. Um, yeah, staff is important too, making sure you've got good quality staff if that's what the business needs to, to sustain. Um, a good spread of customers. It's not The business is not relying on just a small amount of customers. It has a good spread of customers and that reduces your overall risk over the long term. Um, those kind of things are re- really important. Uh, and, um, yeah, I think good cash flow, like, Cash flow is a little bit different to profit. Sometimes people misunderstand that, but strong cash flow and, um, you know, low debt levels, you know, there's lots of other things like that that you need to pay attention to. Have you ever sold, sold a business that wasn't profitable? Yes, plenty. Plenty oh, of businesses really? that are not profitable. Yeah, I think it, the good thing about a business, what people are looking for is usually people will look for other things, you know. So some people will look for a business that's profitable, if that's what you need. But other people will buy a business because it's a turnaround opportunity. They'll turn it around because there's two profits in business. And I'm not sure a lot of people understand that. Like you've got the operations profit that you make every day, the operating profit. And then what you, I call what the, you've got an enterprise profit, which is what you make when you sell it. So if you're buying a business that's underperforming, you'll buy it at a much lower price than if it was a performing business. And your chances of making an enterprise profit or a capital gain from that business when you sell it is much higher. Can you help a prospective buyer under, understand what they're buying? Yeah, absolutely. We do it all the time. Um, a lot of buyers, you know, a lot of buyers buy businesses for the first time. We speak to a lot of buyers that are that are out there. They're first time business buyers. It's really, really scary when you're buying a business for the first time because you sort of, you know, you feel like you're putting all your hard earned money into it, and, and that's the case a lot of the times. Um, I think if you're paying attention to what you're doing. It's pretty safe buying a business. Um, you know, I, I've sort of, I got in trouble for saying this before, but 90% of businesses fail because of the way they're managed. Um, if they're mismanaged, they'll fail. Uh, so I think if you're buying a business that's performing really well and it doesn't perform well after you've bought it and you've ticked all those other boxes, well, you probably got to look in the mirror a little bit. So I guess what we say to a lot of buyers is, Spend some time um, understanding, um, you know, how to operate a business, get some education if you need to. These are the kind of things we talk to first-time business buyers about. Do you, do you think that you need a special temperament to be a business? Are you, are you a particular type of person if, you, if you're going to be a successful small business owner? I think that's a really good question. Um, I think yes and no. So I'll, I'll qualify that answer a little bit because it sounds a bit weird, but yes, if you're if you're looking to grow the business substantially, if you're sort of going into a business and your goal for buying that business is to grow it substantially um, with an exit strategy of selling it for much more than you bought it for, you need to have a, a strong strategic focus. You need to also be an entrepreneur and understand what you're going to do to drive value in that business. If you're sort of looking to buy an income, um, not so much. You probably, you'll, you'll trend towards more of a franchise, something that's already got a, system in place and it's already there ready to go and you just need to operate it um, and you don't really want to drive the business as much as someone that's looking to you know um, build its value and sell it for you know three four times what they bought it for. Do you sometimes think it's a good idea if you've never been in business before to start with a franchise with those established systems? Sometimes yeah sometimes I think if you're a person 
that is uh, that can follow a system and doesn't get frustrated with not getting your you know sort of doing your own thing all the time yes um, it can work out really well and you can learn a lot if you find that you'll get frustrated um, by following a system it's probably not a good call to make because you'll end up in some kind of disagreement with the franchise or at some point in the future so um, yes it's sort of that comes back to that original question you had Ali about um, you know what kind of temperament would you have? I guess understanding how you how you would feel um, and how you would react in those kind of situations is important to know too. So, if you could think of the top three advantages of owning a business, what would mm-hmm. they be? I know, you know, from my perspective, it's the fact that you've got the freedom to to do what mm-hmm. you want. Yeah, yeah, that, that's probably number one for me too. It sort of gives you the flexibility to to you know use your time the way you want to use it i think the other thing is income like um you know i know a lot of millionaires and a lot of them own businesses i don't know a lot of millionaires that work for someone else so you know unless they're ceos or something like that but generally you you generally make more money if you've got a successful business Uh, there's also a risk in that too of course but um that's one of the other advantages of time flexibility and um and income I think the other thing too is you get you get the satisfaction of building something, you know, like for me, I love the satisfaction of building a business and then sort of saying, hey, look what I did. Um, that's the other part that I like about it too. When you went into business for yourself, how did you uh, give yourself, I guess, the confidence to, to take that step? It was really scary. I remember actually really clearly when I made that decision to go into business for myself. And, um, and I look back and think, well, I had no money. I sort of, I just sort of think, oh, I'm sick of working for someone else. I think I'll just go and try this myself. Um, and I think that it was just the desire to have my own business. So I sort of, you know, I had my own business when I was 16, um, sold it, worked for other people. And I've always, I always knew I would have my own business. Um, and I guess it was the just taking that leap of doing it. I think you've got to, it's, no matter what you do, it's going to be scary when you do it for the first time. You know, are you doing the right thing? Uh, comes into your mind and and I guess I had to make it work I was in a situation where I sort of had to make it work so I sort of worked hard to make it work and um, that probably held me in good stead I had a young family two little kids and a wife looking at me saying what are we going to do where's the money coming from (laughs) so you sort of had to do it a bit like that so I sort of had to get out there and make it work but I I would not change anything you know like scaring it the scary of it the fear I had the hard work I had to put in I wouldn't change a thing now you know, looking back um, in that time. You know, it's similar for me as a freelancer. I'm in business for myself as well. And when I started out, you know, I was just so terrified that I wouldn't be a success that I worked around the clock. And that's one of the disadvantages, I think, is how do you manage your time so that you're not working seven days a week? Yeah, and that's a hard thing too because you can become a workaholic when you're working for yourself, uh, especially when you're first starting out. Um, I talk to a lot of, you know, business owners now and I say, when you're first starting out, you just have to put the time in. Um, there's not a lot you can do to, to change that. Um, and I think if you're determined to make it work, you'll put the time in, the effort in. Um, and, and I guess that's one of the disadvantages of um, owning your own business is initially you'll have to work harder than if you work for someone else. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, but eventually, eventually, um, and it's different times for every one of us, but eventually it becomes easier, becomes more successful. You can start to hire other people um, to come in and help you out. And so there's the advantages of it. But initially, yeah, um, you've got to work hard. There's no doubt. That's the thing. You know, they say the most successful businesses, you need to work on the business, not in yeah. the business. So how do you develop the discipline to do that? Yeah, that's another great question because a lot of people don't understand working on and in the business. Like I talk to a lot of business owners um, about what they're doing. See, some of the things I see are big failures for business owners is they don't know how to market themselves. They don't really know how to get out there and promote themselves. And that's actually working on the business. Um, So, you know, a lot of people misunderstand that. I think you've got to sit down, primarily what I would suggest is sit down with someone that's probably been there and done that, have a chat to them. Um, about this, this kind of um, aspect of working on your business to develop it um, and sort of growing it from there. Like I've worked with, you know, business owners that comes to mind specifically who's a great operator. He's a fantastic creative mind, creative thinker, and he does marketing for other businesses but doesn't do any marketing for himself. Mm-hmm. So 
you know, you had to sit down with him and say, you need to do marketing for yourself. You need to show people why you're, why you're really good at what you're doing um, because he wasn't as successful as he wanted to be and that was because he wasn't working on the business. He was always working in it, you know. Um, so I think you just got to take that time, sit back, maybe talk to someone or, or really work on your strategy for your business going forward. You know, the old saying is plan, plan to succeed. You know, if you don't plan, you plan to fail. You know that. You know that I probably didn't say that right, but anyway, you know what, I, you know what I'm saying. That's right. So. You don't plan. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I think a lot of business owners struggle with the fact that 80% of their revenue might come for, from one or two clients. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. one of those businesses or clients goes and they're left with a huge hole um, and they haven't yeah. done any sales work to make sure they've got that continuity of revenue. What's your advice to avoid that pitfall? Yeah, it probably comes back to that the previous question, having that strategic vision for your, for your business. What are you going to do for that? that? That is a huge problem. I see a lot of businesses that I've been involved with in the past that have that exact problem. Like they'll come to me and they'll want to sell their business. And when we look at it, we think, well, wow, you know, so much of your revenue is coming from one source. That's a huge risk for a buyer. So you need to have strategies in your business to look for diversifying your income. So, and that could be looking for new customers, having a strategy in place to go and find new customers. Um, it, it, it's as a broker looking at businesses, it's one of the very first things I look for is diversity, diversity of income. Um, so I would say they need to, part of that strategy session they're going to have with themselves, hopefully they do, um, they can sort of sit down and go, right, let's let's look at where we're going to get more customers if we're relying too heavily on one income source or one client. One client. I know myself that you, over the years, you just develop that large book of clients that helps you mm-hmm. ride through those, those peaks and troughs of being in business. Yeah, yeah. Well, the longer you're in business, the more successful you become. So it's sort of one of those things like most of my work today comes from referrals like when I first started I was very very active marketing myself out there knocking on doors and sort of running around from morning to night it sort of felt like but um, now it's a lot of my work comes from referrals because I've spent 20 years building my reputation and um, so I guess after you've done that people know who you are and you don't have to work as hard on the marketing side of it to sort of diversify your income you still have to think about it like I still have to think about it to make sure I'm you know focusing on the right thing but you know, um, it's not as hard as it was when I first started or I'm just better at it, you know. And I think the longer you're in business, just just simple, really, the more successful you become because you just become better at it. That's it. It's like anything, you hone it. And, you know, mm. uh, one, my dad was a small business owner and one of his favourite expressions was, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And I think that's yeah. the same in small business. Yeah, I've heard that everywhere. And I think it's so true. Uh, you know, um, it's one of those statements that sort of always rings true. And if it's meant to be, it's up to me. You know, I, I say that to myself a lot, you know. So, um, and, I, and I guess um, that's some of the things that business owners need to be aware of because, you know, you can play a bit of the blame game sometimes. You can say, oh, it's someone else's fault. It's the government's fault. You know, everyone else is to blame but me. But I think in the end, none, none of them are going to step in and run your business for you, are they? So, you know, you need to sort of think, okay, that might be a problem, but how do I overcome it? You know, stay solutions focused and really focus on a solution for your business rather than sort of sitting there procrastinating about, you know, the problems that you may be having. And I think if people do that or business owners do that, they're going to be much stronger operating a more successful business. That's right. You know, there's a name for that. It's called self-attribution bias. And it means that, you, everything that goes well in your life, that's all to do with you and everything that goes bad in your life is to do with someone else. And yeah. if you can recognise that, then you can go about changing some of the things that are negative in your life and turning them around. Yeah, I've got a business partner now and everything that goes bad, it's always his fault. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Len, looking back at all the businesses you've bought and sold, is there any particular one that stands out as a really great success? Yeah, there's been quite a few, actually. I think looking back at businesses, most of the ones that I've bought and sold, the ones that stand out to me that have been the most successful, the ones that are are well thought out and well planned. Um, I've seen it. I've sort of, I've been involved in hundreds of transactions now, and I guess there is a, there's always a common sort of um, attribute to a business that's going to be a great success and uh, and great franchise, you know, or if it can be a franchise, and that's they're really well organised and they're really planning out. 
Um, so if I can leave anyone from this podcast with any kind of thought, it's take that time and sit down and just plan it out a little bit better um, because you're going to have a, have a much higher success rate if you sort of know the direction you're going in. Um, and uh, most of the successful businesses that I've seen, and some of them are, um, you know, multinational businesses, um, they spend an enormous amount of time just organising themselves and planning what they want to do. Um, and on the other side, I've seen plenty of businesses that fail. And I go in and go, so what do you, where are you sort of looking at doing next quarter? What are your goals for next quarter? And they don't know. So I guess if they don't know, they're just going to get what's delivered up to them. I guess, Ali, I think is the way that that happens. Okay. So then what's your advice to people to make a success of their business? Well, I think the first thing is you've got to go and do it. So I see so many people um, looking to buy a business that never actually buy one. So I'm not sure, I'm really sure why that happens, but I think it's fear is the main thing. I think the most thing you can do to be successful is you've got to go and buy a business. Um, the second thing I would do is just engage professional advisors. So if you all sort of got a bit of fear in what you're doing, get some help. So talk to people about what you're looking at, get their advice on it. And then what I always say to business owners is you've got to make a commercial decision. Don't, don't let the decision be made by fear. Make it commercially because um, most businesses that are successful will continue to be successful as long as they're run correctly. And if they've sort of listened to previously what we've been talking about early, you know, if they're planning, they're doing all these things, they should be okay. Um, if the business is already successful, it doesn't stop being successful overnight just because you own it. Um, so I guess the thing to do is do it, number one. Definitely do it because I would not go back and be an employee. I'd be a terrible employee, by the way. <laughs> but I think um, yeah, do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and and get some good advice. So that's what, that would be my major um, major sort of advice statements. That's really great advice. Thanks so much, Len, for everything that you've uh, explained to us today. Um, that's it for this episode of Buy That Business. We'd love to hear from our audience and all our contact details are in the information about the podcast. So please get in touch uh, if there's anything you'd like to cover in future episodes.